Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. All right, and um, Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to read just a few verses here. Um, so, all right, and uh, when, you get, when you find your place, if you're able to, I ask that you stand with me as we read the Word of God. You can sit down while you sing, and uh, you can sit down while you get to prayers. But I think this is the most important thing that we do uh, in our church, that we stand for the reading of the Word of God. Amen? <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> I'm going to read verses 25 through 29. And uh, as we begin to read that, let's look at it. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 through 29. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not... Uh, for if they escaped, not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. <clears throat> Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this world yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. I like that, amen? Don't forget to circle that, very important. Verse 28, Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire let's go to the Lord in prayer God we come to you tonight and as the Lord we think about how important this means preaching the word of God is the most important thing that we can understand tonight and I pray him father that Lord we will be in tune to understand him father your spirit working in our lives lord uh, we are unworthy people to receive your grace but yet dear god we're grateful that you have given it and lord that you have given it in a way more than we can ever understand of what you have already demonstrated we don't understand the love that you have for mankind we don't understand dear god that why you allow the evil and the wickedness to come about and yet dear god uh, you are still on your throne that loves every vile sinner. And so, Lord, we thank you today, dear God, for that. Because, Lord, I remember for me when I was a vile sinner. And I remember also there are times, dear God, that when I don't do things that are so pleasant to your sight. And so, Lord, thank you for having mercy on us. And tonight, Heavenly Father, as we look into the Word of God... I pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts and help us, dear God, that we could only continually be faithful, could only be continuous uh, moving forward for your honor and glory. And so, Lord, we ask tonight that you bless your word upon our hearts. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated, if you will. May I say to you tonight that there is never a week that does not go by in large without someone developing circumstances in their life that does not simply take place. We all have issues or problems, and yet we are seeing today that events uh, are coming upon the, the world that we're living in, and it's simply shaking the world. And uh, you, you, if you look here with me, uh, about what the Bible said in verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And, uh, and I think of tonight uh, how the earth is being shook. Amen? And uh, I mean, things are 
uh, it seemed like overnight, became upside down. Uh, you remember what Isaiah speaks. Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil, right? And uh, we went from the very beginning of the year charged up, ready to serve God with all of our strength. And all of a sudden, just in overnight, a virus comes across uh, and the, uh, uh, goes into all the world. And it seems uh, instantaneously this virus went from every part of the country, every part of the world, in every state, in every city, in every home, everybody is dealing with this virus. And so we're seeing that end time events are, are shaking the lives of people. And yet, may I not say just shaking them, not just rattling them, but, they, uh, but these things are shattering the lives of people. I mean, when I, I mean, I believe that there's a difference of simply being shook and awakened and simply being shattered to pieces. Amen? And uh, so this, uh, these end time things, these things that are coming upon and shaking not just heaven, but uh, heaven and earth. Uh, they are shattering the lives of people. And, and, uh, and, and today, uh, they are appearing more and more, right? It's not just a one-time thing. But other things are coming about uh, at the same time, simultaneously. And, and uh, we've, uh, in the very beginning of the virus, when we were looking into the Bible, and uh, we were uh, uh, back, uh, back in March, we were looking into the Bible, and, and I remember uh, that uh, the pandemic, we were going through the, uh, the plagues of the Egyptian, and, and uh, there was a pandemic then at that time, and uh, we were looking at other things, how other things were coming upon the scene as well. But you think about not only the pandemic, but what about the diseases, right? Uh, what about... Uh, 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 these uh, locusts that are plaguing the, uh, uh, the eastern part uh, of the world. And yet, we don't hear about those things. All we're hearing about uh, is uh, the election for 2020 and the coronavirus. That's all we're hearing. But these are, there's much more that is going on today, folks. Much more. And, uh, uh, but much more that is simply shaking heaven and earth. And so the world is discovering uh, today that there is a great crisis, right? And uh, this crisis is everywhere you go, is uh, everywhere you turn. Uh, look in the magazines, turn on the book. I was uh, uh, watching a bus go by on Telegraph one day. Can't remember where I was at, uh, but it uh, had to be at a red light or something. That's where it was. I was going to a tent revival a couple weeks ago. And on the bus, here comes a bus. You know, one of the big old city bus, right? You with me? Comes a big old bus. And uh, on the bus, they had a bus. And uh, this was kind of ironic. Now, this is, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a good drawer. But I'm, a, I'm just going to draw this little figure right here. And on the bus, right, you could see the advertisement. But what caught my eye is each part on the side of the advertisement sign, each part like that was a lady and a man on this side and a lady on this side and, and, and what it was is that they were wearing a mask. Right? So it's like it was like they were creeping in to the sign and they were wearing a mask. Right? But that was a couple weeks ago. Now, now everywhere you go, I mean it's full fledged. People are putting it uh, uh, I went somewhere the other day and, uh, man, they got the signs made up. I mean, look like they, they've always had these things coming about. And, and, uh, and so I'm just saying to you today that everywhere you go, uh, there's a crisis. Everywhere you go, there's confusion. Everywhere you go, you read the paper, you read the bulletins, you hear about uh, something's added to the crisis and so forth. New problems, new tragedy. I mean, modern times, here it is. Right? What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, look what the Bible says in verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, yet 
Once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. I think that today what we're seeing, God spoke. Amen. And uh, I, I, you say, how did he speak? I, I could probably, I could say probably he spoke. All right. All right. Hey, let's pull back a little bit. Let's take a step back. Right. I mean, I could hear, you know, you know, like if we were going out there and and, uh, you know, we we're in a group and say, OK, now uh, let's take a step back. Let's just take a step back and and ponder about for a moment. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm sure that that's what God did. He said, hey, let's take a step back. And and when he did, you know, we, we see that God is doing some great things in the life of people, but only those who are willing to hear, right? I mean, those that can't see, they can't hear, they can't see. I mean, they see with their eyes, but they don't see. They don't see spiritually. They can hear with their ears, but they're not hearing what the Spirit is wooing them, right? And I could, uh, and I could see uh, some of these things where uh, that uh, God says, okay, let's, let's pull back a little bit. That letter that you're going to get is going to describe some of that. And I pray that you read that. But today, the world is alarming. And uh, they're alarming, uh, and not in, uh, 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 because of just some being an alert, but they're alarming of, of state of confusion. Everywhere, every, everywhere uh, you go, everybody's confused. They don't know which way to go. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. I mean, you go into the grocery store. You can talk to people, right? People won't talk to you. Because they're confused. They don't know, oh man, this guy is my enemy or he's my friend. They don't know that. And uh, what I'm saying to you today, we are truly in an exceptional crisis today. We are living in a time when we are simply, every one of us, is being tested for what we believe, for how we feel, and what we're thinking, whatever the case may be. Every one of us is being tested. And uh, I'll, I'll just be honest to you. I'm done with it. Amen. I mean, I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I got to go through the test just like anybody else. But may I say to you, it wears on you. It wears on you. And so everybody has uh, got some view of life. All right. Everybody, everybody's got some. even the thoughtless people have views in life. Now, they may not respond and uh, and they may uh, say that they don't have an opinion. But uh, but I say that they do have an opinion and they will respond. And uh, and that's coming out. There was a guy I was watching on uh, a, a post and. He was saying that he was one of the those that were uh, was afraid to step out. He was one to uh, uh, to uh, say anything about this or that, you know. And, but today he stepped out and caused a great movement, put it on Facebook and uh, he put his thoughts out on Facebook, got up the next morning and uh, there was 500 people. Uh, no, it was in seven hours when he put when he wrote it, what his thoughts was about uh, uh, some of the, uh, his views. When he wrote it out, there was in seven hours, 500 people that had had the same views he did. Then he went to bed and woke up at, uh, uh, overnight and on overnight there was 5000 that uh, that began to take a movement, his movement. And then uh, within a week, uh, it, it just in a couple weeks, and now it's up to 400,000. And, uh, and so what I'm saying to you is that uh, these, these guys are making the mission, Michigan uh, 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 a movement. I'm trying to think what, they, what they, their, um, their name was, but I think it was like something like Michigan Conservative or something like that. And uh, anyways... Uh, they're, they're tired of uh, being pushed around and bullied around. And, uh, and so they got uh, this thing that they were doing, a rally or whatever, we the people, right? We the people. The silent majority uh, is we the people and all. And, uh, and so I think that, you know, uh, what we're seeing today uh, is people 
have an opinion and they have uh, a, uh, something uh, to say. And, and yet, even though that chaos drifts into um, uh, parts of the country, I, I, one, one thing that I don't like, and, uh, but um, the Democrats and the Republican, and I'm not here to preach some, you know, political party, but I'm going to tell you right now, they, uh, both parties got my phone number, and they both sending me texts, right? And uh, I, I don't like that. And, uh, you know, but I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's right that how the, 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 uh, the Democrat and the Republican, right, oppose their opinions and all of that, but we can't as Christians oppose the gospel. Because the gospel will be the one thing that will help an individual in their life. But we can't oppose that. We can't, we can't tell them uh, about the gospel. And, and uh, I was looking at a little, re, uh, little thing on um, something what pastors can do. Pastors can't, you know, say, well, you need to vote for a Republican or you need to vote for a Democrat or... Pastors can't, you know, uh, 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 make mention about, you know, this party or that party or, you know, whatever, you know, stuff like that. You know, they can't do this, can't do that, right? But uh, may I say to you today, if you and I would just be more concerned about what Jesus has for us to do, and we would be more concerned about doing what he has bid us to do, you won't have to worry about which party you're on. Amen? Amen? And uh, uh, I, I don't vote for, uh, I'm, I'm not saying vote for Republican, I'm not saying vote for Democrat, but I'm saying right now, if your vote is in Jesus Christ, if you're in establishing Jesus Christ, he'll direct you what you need to vote. Amen? And, uh, and I think that that's what, uh, where we're at today. Chaos is here because of people having opinions. They all, uh, and that's more what it is. Today we're seeing a shaking upon the world because people and their opinions. You know what I'm saying? Well, if they, if they wanted any uh, suggestions, opinions ain't going to make your life better. Amen? Opinions don't mean nothing. Amen? What means something is when you and I are living and basing our life on facts and truths. And so today, we need to see that opinions don't mean nothing. I, I think of today, those who voice a little of their opinions uh, will say among themselves, what is the use of trying to live a life better when it simply turns out bad anyways? See, that's, that's the people who have opinions, right? What is the use to standing up for what's right when it's going to turn out sour anyways? Well, I think there is a great uh, use. I mean, uh, I, boy, I could see so many times how easy that is to fall in that trap, right? There is a great use. You know why? Because God has given something in you. He has placed something in you and in me to, uh, to, to shake the heavens and the earth. Amen? And, uh, and that is with the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. But uh, think of this today. These folks with these opinions... They have this, uh, this mindset, like in, found in Luke chapter 12, verse 18 and 19. They say, and he said, thus will I do. I will pull down thy, my bars and build greater, and there, and, and there will I dispose uh, all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat and drink and be merry. Many people today, they, they, they have opinions, and their opinions don't mean squat. All they want to do is just eat, drink, and be merry. Folks, I'm not for that, and, uh, and you're not for that, and, uh, and, and we're not uh, for that because we're for the Lord Jesus Christ, and, uh, and by that, uh, that when God, verse 26 tells us, whose voice then shook the heaven and earth, may I say to you, when God speaks, you and I are to be shaken. Amen? Oh, I tell you today, you say, preacher, what are you saying? Make a point here. 
When God began to spoke and allow this virus come into this world, one of the things that I believe that God spoke to me is, who am I going to fear? Amen. That spoke hard to me. I remember uh, when I had went to South Carolina and uh, and uh, that was when the virus just came out, and we didn't know who to trust, what to trust. Didn't know what to trust. But I remember God speaking to me, and, and God says, "Or right, hey, don't touch the walls of the plane, right? Don't breathe in other people's breath, right? I mean, God was speaking that to me, and uh, I followed that. And uh, may I say to you, I mean, when God spoke, I, I mean, it shook, amen? And I think of today, everybody's point of view and everybody's attitude towards life is on trial, especially when it comes to the kingdom of God. And I think that that's what's happening today. Things are coming on trial. And so we live in a highly breakable, highly shakable world. uh, And it's not no matter of people whining. Uh, That's not the real matter. You know, people whine about this or that, everything like that, you know. And uh, but that's not what it's all about. What it's really about is that God is speaking and uh, and either we're going to shake ourselves into uh, obedience or we're going to shake ourselves and to be judged with the world. Right. Bottom line. So uh, many folks, that's why it's in our, in our hearts to pray for other folks, amen? But this, these things that we're dealing with in the end times, they are shaking the heavens and they are shaking the earth and it's caused a great fusion, confusion. And, uh, but I think of today that as we look into God's word, and understand that God has called us to be an ambassador. Amen. And, uh, you know, it's so easy to get discouraged. It is. But we got to remember that even in all of that, we are still the ambassadors for Christ. My wife sent me a little picture today. And uh, she had went to the uh, bank to pay for the van payment and, uh, go, you know, go through the drive through and uh, she took one of those uh, little smiley face cards that we have. And she said uh, in her text, it's so easy to leave this behind, you know, with the smiley face, you know. And uh, you say, preacher, what, do you, what does all that mean? Well, I mean, she's just fulfilling her role as an ambassador, right? No matter what's going on, we are to still remember that we are the ambassadors for Christ. And we ought to be leaving things behind and for people to, uh, to, um, to discover. Because if our world is shaken up and we are in Christ, can you imagine what other people are dealing with? And so today, I want you to consider with, with me uh, uh, as what the Bible was describing here. Go back with me in the checks here. And uh, verse, uh, I think it was verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. And so I want to speak to you just on a few moments. A kingdom that cannot be shaken or a kingdom that cannot be moved. Amen. Boy, that, that's very comforting tonight. Amen. To know that people are disheartened. To know that uh, 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 people are backing away. They're taking that step back and all of that. But even in all of that, we are in a kingdom that cannot be removed. Amen. And uh, that just uh, uplifts my spirit. Amen. And uh, I think of today, the world may be rapturing, uh, may be in rupture today, and the world may be in a stillability. They have no stability about it. But we too, we can, we can have that stability uh, in our lives. And how does it begin? Well, it begins with a new life in Christ. Amen. And, uh, you know, this isn't the first time that we have, as God's people, discovered some hardship in our lives. Right? This isn't the first time. I mean, if you've been saved long enough, you, you, you've gone through some other things that perhaps has turned your world upside down and, and, uh, and God's got you through it. Amen. 
And as God got you through it, he, not only, he didn't only just get you through it, but he, he, uh, he gave you some things, and you, some things that even you hold on to this day. And, and I, I think of today that uh, how my life began uh, uh, when I, uh, in Christ, and it began when I surrendered and said, okay, Lord, I want to do it your way. Amen? Boy, what a great help it has been for me that the more I learn to do things the Lord's way, the more it brings stability in my life. And that's what people need today, right? They don't need no more opinions. They got enough opinions today to where it's destroying them. But what they need today is they need to see what stability really is. And I think that's why uh, I believe today how you and I, we as God's people, we can have stability because when we gave our life uh, to Jesus, uh, we, God put us in that journey to have stability. And so tonight, I want to give you three things and go through it as much as we can. And uh, uh, I'll do as fast as I can to try to uh, bring uh, a close to this sermon. But number one, look at me in verse 25 as we begin to develop the first point. In verse 25, the Bible says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him and spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. First of all, uh, I want to say to you today that as God's people, we're the only ones that can have anchors in our life. And as we consider this, as we think about this, tonight, according to verse um, 25, I want to say that as, uh, as Christians, anchored Christians refuses him not that speaketh. In other words, uh, as we are Christians that are anchored in the Word of God, that are an anchored in Jesus Christ, notice with me in verse 25, it says, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. The only way that you and I can be anchored in our faith is when we refuse not him that speaketh. You remember the Bible said in this very, uh, these very verse uh, that, the, uh, that God spoke, uh, uh, and when he spoke, it shook heaven and earth. Amen? But may I say, as we look in this tonight, we as God's people don't need to refuse God when he speaks to us. I think that's a great lesson, amen? Because many of God's people today, uh, that's exactly what they're doing in their life. And uh, God's, pe uh, God's people, we are to be the ones that have stability because we are obeying. We are following we are seeking out the Word of God, what He has spoken to us tonight. And, uh, and, and as we do it, uh, it brings stability. And so we must bear in mind uh, that in the book of Hebrews, in this, uh, in this part here, uh, that the children of Israel were under persecution. They were under persecution because they had uh, forsaken Judaism for Christ. Amen. And uh, today you are seeing, you're going to see much more as these end time events keep unfolding. You're going to see more and more God's people become under persecution. And as, as we become more and more under persecution, it's going to be because we have chosen Christ instead of the world's religion. Amen? And, uh, and so don't let it be bitter. Don't let it be some bitter opposition in your heart. Let it be something that will develop and cause a stability in your life. And that is because you are, you are heeding to when God speaks to you. So as we think about this at this time, uh, uh, in, uh, and the book of Hebrews was written, uh, there were uh, folks that were in danger suffering uh, 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 for uh, other signs, and they were suffering. They thought that their suffering uh, was something to be um, uh, talked about. In other words, uh, they kind of gloated in their suffering, right? 
And uh, I, I just want to say to you today, uh, we never would want to gloat in our suffering. Now, suffering isn't always easy to accept, but we don't want to gloat into it, say, well, you know, uh, we're suffering because we're better than you. Well, I think that, uh, that that's going to cause a great hardship in our hearts, amen? When we set ourselves to where we're better than other people, uh, we, we forget that God committed his love and that while we were all sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So we think about today uh, that we should never think that our sufferings are unique, amen? And uh, my sufferings isn't no more unique than the next gentleman's sufferings, right? And uh, sufferings always bring pain, and no one wants to deal pain. But we're not here to, uh, we're not here for a contest, right? Right? I, I've had the biggest suffering. Well, you know, so, uh, so if I had the biggest suffering, well, then, uh, then you would heed to me because I know how God, uh, he, I, I know how God works, Right? We're not here for competition. We're here to help one another. Amen. And, uh, and so we are to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. And uh, you think about uh, back in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, many, uh, many of the folks there, they suffered severely. And, uh, and as they suffered severely, uh, they were still, they became very loyal uh, to their God. Amen. And uh, I think today that uh, that's what brings stability is when we're loyal to our Savior. Amen? And uh, you say, what does all that mean? Well, uh, just as it becomes disheartening in your life and in my life, uh, if if we look into the lives of other people, well, they're not getting involved. So why should I get involved? Right? Very disheartening. Well, we should get involved because we should be loyal to our Savior. Because isn't he loyal to us? Amen? And uh, and so many Christians today, they live a defeated life because they have not learned how to regard themselves towards the voice of God. And man, that's that's a tragedy. And uh, we ought to be the people that are responding when God speaks, we, uh, there are things shaken in our life. And I think of today that the voice of God can uh, be uttered differently according to different cultures, but yet the message is the same, right? Uh, I remember a guy uh, dealing uh, back in when I was roofing and all, but uh, the guy's name was Danny, and, uh, and he had somewhat of a religion background, but his culture is quite different. Now, when he read the part, it says, greet the, holy bre- uh, greet the brethren with a holy kiss, he literally took that a- in reality. I mean, he would, you didn't watch him. He'd kiss you on, on, your, on the side of your cheek now. And, uh, and, but we do things differently, right? But may I say to you, even though we do things differently and culturally, right, we, the message should still be the same. And uh, so refusing God when he speaks brings forth a hideous sin. And that is that when we refuse uh, him, when we refuse God that speaketh in our life, uh, it places us in contempt with God, brings us under charges, places us uh, uh, under that, that hand of judgment. And folks, we don't want that, amen? Amen. We don't want to live under the hand of judgment uh, of God. And, and, uh, and, and, but we all have that, uh, that struggle, dealing with this flesh. Uh, I think of uh, not only that it brings us in content with God, but number two, uh, when we refuse God, it renders a hardness of the heart. Psalms chapter 95, verse 8, the Bible says, Harden not your heart as in the provocation as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Hebrews 3, uh, 15. While it said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. And so uh, we're encouraged not to harden our hearts, right? And uh, you say, well, how do we harden our hearts? When you ignore what God is speaking, right? And uh, many of God's people 
They can't determine when God is speaking. So they don't know when God is speaking. They ignore God and then they go on living their life and yet they just become where they harden their heart. And so we can't refuse God when he speaks because it will bring us in content with God. Or uh, uh, number two, it will harden uh, our heart. And then number three, that when we refuse uh, God speaking to us, when we refuse him, then we terminate the headship of Christ in our life. Notice what the Bible says. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. So there's a great warning there. And, uh, and I believe that that warning comes that when God speaketh, I mean, we can't ignore it and get away with it, right? And uh, if God is leading uh, the church and we're, not, uh, we, and we're not knowing if he's leading, we don't know how he's leading, but yet uh, other folks tell us, well, God is speaking and uh, God is telling me we ought to uh, do this and we ought to do this and it's not opinions. Folks, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. It's not opinions, but it's based upon the Word of God, and it is based and uh, and experienced in our experience. And if our experiences are matching with the Word of God, then it must prove to us that God is leading, because it's not. It doesn't deal with opinions. So what I'm saying to you that uh, that God. We know in uh, 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 how he speaks, and he is spoken in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. You could turn there real, real quick with, for me, uh, with me. Colossians, and uh, show you how he speaks here. Colossians uh, chapter 1. All right, and uh, look with me in verse uh, 16 through 18. Okay, and uh, verse uh, 16, the Bible says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether, here it is, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. And uh, we, we prayed for the church tonight. Amen. But who's the head of the, uh, the church? Well, according to the Bible, Jesus Christ is. And what I'm saying to you, that if you and I are refusing to hear him speak, then we terminate the headship of Christ, right? If we are refusing him that speaketh, uh, then we render a hardness of the heart. If we refuse him that speaketh, we bring ourselves in contempt with God. Folks, it can't get no clearer than that. Because according to the word of God, you and I, when, uh, according to Hebrews, that when God speaketh, uh, when he speaks, things get shaken up, right? Notice back, uh, back with me in Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And uh, I, I want to say to you that uh, we're not there yet. But I believe that we are seeing the trembles and the rumblings and all of that. And, uh, and, and this right here, it, I can only perceive that it's speaking of the rapture, right? Because when God begins to speak uh, his judgment, right? When he tells him, open that vial, and set loose those angels and let go of the, uh, the, the horses and all that. When God says let go and, and he speaks his judgment, that judgment shakes 
earth and heaven. And, uh, and so today, uh, we think about we're seeing some things today that are coming upon the land, coming upon the earth, and it's being shaken. And God's given that command. And, uh, and so today, I, I just want to uh, make mention that it is a hideous sin when we uh, uh, deny uh, of God speaking in our lives. When the voice of God is held in regards in one's life, this is a good thing, all right? When we hold regards, when we, up, when we, when we, when we put effort into what God is saying, then guess what? It'll, it will produce a great change in our life. And I want to say to you today, that's exactly what we need, right? We need a great change. The world needs a great change. But the great change can only come, right, when we are, uh, when we are simply regarding what God is saying. And I tell you, I wish that folks would get on board with that, Amen. Uh, I wish that some of my family would understand that God is a serious God. And he says that if you die without Jesus Christ in your heart, no matter how you get him in your heart, rather through compassion, through fear, whatever the case may be, according to Jude chapter 20, uh, verse 22, right? And 23, right? But as long as you get him in your heart, right? That's the important part. You regard what God is saying. But those, the Bible says that all of those who reject Jesus Christ as Savior are going to end up in hell. And I wish some of my family would regard what God is saying. God will keep his word, folks. He will keep his word. And you know that. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. But what I say to you today, we as God's people, we are to be in practice and we are to be concerned about regarding what God tells us to do. And so when we don't, well, it'll be trouble. But when we do, well, there will become a greater change. Amen. And uh, that change comes when we are regarding Jesus Christ in our life. When we are regarding what he's telling us to do, that greater change will come. And as that greater change comes, well... We'll be in the mode of doing what verse 21 says. So look at me in verse 21. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 21. The Bible says, where is it? Where am I? Uh, Hebrews chapter, yeah, 12, verse 21. All right. Um, nope, that's not it either. I don't know how I got that messed up. Um, Anyways, oh, verse 1, verse 1. All right, I knew something was wrong. Verse 1, I just can't read, amen? All right, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, here it is, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, the race that is set before us. So there are things that God is speaking for, to you and I, and uh, he's telling us that uh, to be able to produce a great change is that we've looked at it, that we are to obey his voice. And as we are obeying his voice, he's telling us there are some things to lay aside. And the Bible says, lay aside that every weight. Well, as we consider, we went through already, laying aside that weight is simply that we're not refusing to obey uh, what God speaks. That, and, and so we've seen that tonight, uh, verse 26, uh, I mean verse 25, See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escaped not who refused him that spake on uh, earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. So, in other words, we're not going to escape because we, uh, we're just God's people. We're, you know, just because we're God's people doesn't mean that we're not, that we're not going to escape. And, 
and when we disobey God's voice. And so I want to encourage you tonight, uh, according to the Word of God, anchor yourselves, and you anchor yourselves by simply not refusing Him to speak. And then number two, verse 27, verse 22, verse 27 will bring out our second point. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27, and this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Number two, uh, as Christians, being anchored, we are to be uh, cr uh, anchored Christians that remove things that are able to be shaken. All right? So there's a couple of things that I want to go through and, and give that out to you tonight. And, uh, and so, first of all, I think of this tonight, that uh, your future is not in secret. Amen? And, uh, you know, God's not trying to hide what he wants you to do. He wants you to know. But if your future is hidden, it's hidden from you and you only. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, your future is your decision. You're the one in control of that. And uh, so if you want to refuse what God is speaking, that's, that's, that's on you, right? But you need to understand that your future, my future, I'm in control. And we are in control by our own decisions, okay? And uh, you can call it your opinions if you want. But may I say to you, the decisions can only be determined by making what God has already spoken to you as a believer. And, uh, and so, so whatever you have or whatever happens in your life is not an accident, right? Uh, boy, I'm, I'm more and more aware today that my life was not an accident when my, when my uh, mother gave me over. Now, let me give you this. I, I've told you that I've been, I've been I'm still putting things together, but I found out recently that my mother had blood poison. All right? And, uh, and, and then, uh, you know, so God saved her. I, I could see God's grace and all of that. And then, and then whatever the case may be, uh, she gave me over, and she went her way, and, and all of that, and I went through all of that, but, you know, I thought, well, man, I mean, nobody loves me. I mean, I, I'm forsaken, all of that. Well, I was never forsaken. I was never forsaken, and I could see that more today than I could ever went through, and, and boy, <clears throat> I mean, I wish that I had a lot of knowledge and understanding because I would, uh, I, I would write books about it, amen? But what I want to say to you today I think of today that if things wasn't an accident, how I got to be chosen my name. Now, I found out from my, from my mother that she, uh, she said that I was, I was named after my grandfather. Now, I wasn't named after my biological grandfather. I was named after a, uh, my mother's uh, stepfather, all right? And uh, his name was Bobby Jerome, right? And uh, she didn't call, she says, she goes, she goes, I thought about calling you Bobby. I said, oh, please, God, so I, I'm, I'm so glad you didn't name me Bobby. I mean, wow. I mean, Bobby, Robbie, what all of that? I said, man, I, I mean, I, I think I told her that. We just talked about it about a week ago. I said, I am so grateful. And she goes, I could have called you Bob. I said, oh, man, <laughs> man, I mean, you're killing me now. But. But she called me Robert Jerome. Now, let me, I'm just telling you, I'm just trying to get you to see this, that, uh, but, um, but my names go into the effect that she named me after somebody that made an impact in her life. But she named me without any understanding what she was doing. All right, now, my name is this. Robert means bright fame. Jerome means to be holy. So my name means bright fame to be holy. That was no accident. It might have been coincidental to my mother, but it was no accident that God 
spared my life because my mother was, had blood poison and the blood poison was so bad that it would kill her and me and, uh, and all of that. And I was just like, Whew. I mean, how do you get over that? You can't. Amen. When God speaks to you, I mean, whoa, I mean, it just... So what I'm saying to you tonight, anchor Christians remove things that are shaken. And that's where I'm at today. Removing those things that are easily to be shaken in my life. Why? Well, because if we're in Christ, we're the most stable people in all the world. Amen? <laughs> you know? I mean, and, uh, and people don't understand it. Right. How we can go through the midst of the storm and still be uh, able to have a uh, have our insanity. Right. I think of today. How can we as Christians live a life that isn't shaken? Well, number one, we can be anchor Christians that who feed their spirit. Amen. We think about what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We are stable when we are eating the word of God. When we are consuming it. Amen. In our text, we, we seen, oh, well, we're past time. Nathan, why didn't you let me know? Wow. All right, and uh, uh, we 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 seen in our text uh, for our God is a consuming fire, right? And uh, so, what that that tells us helps us to understand that we are to always be consuming in our lives as Christians. And the only way that we can uh, be Christians that are not shaken is that we're always consuming the Word of God. I guess that's why I like preaching so much. Amen? Sometimes I need the help of a preacher that would simply open up my mind, open up my heart, and, and give me a little nugget, and it just fires me up. Amen? And, uh, and so we're going to have to stop there. I, I apologize. I really thought we were going to get through this. And uh, just when I got your attention, man, we got we to gotta get done. Amen? I don't, I don't get it. But anyways, uh, uh, we'll, we'll pick it up, amen, uh, 